Right, this is the um, Horseman of the Apocalypse, uh, Chapter 5, Last Orders. Longer version. Last Orders. The grandfather clock in the corner of the swilling saloon strikes eleven times. The Wakan hangs a closed sign on the door. Uh. Sergeant Jacob Browntree takes a swig from a, a bottle, sorry, from a bottle of um, Kentucky bourbon, bourbon, and hands the empty bottle to the old Indian behind the counter. Not a bad day's work, gentlemen, smiles the Confederate soldier, sitting on a wooden stool at the bar. He turns his head to face the uh, beautiful, plump, buxom-chested, bronze-skinned lady of the night, standing at his side, dressed in navy blue, satin evening dress. Uh, do you want to tell them? Or shall I? Jake whispers into his girlfriend's left, uh, his girlfriend's right ear. Gloria puts her right arm around the old man's waist and grins a broad, white, pearly-toothed smile. Um, Jacob has asked me to marry him. I said yes. She turns her head to the right. If that is all right with you, Daddy, she asks. The old soldier stands up. Uh, May I have permission to marry your daughter, sir? Jake bows his head towards the ageing Native American Mandan Indian, polishing glasses behind the bar with a white cotton cloth deep in meditation. Hawakan oh. giggles and bursts out laughing. I've been waiting 20 years for you to ask that question, son. Welcome to the family. The 80-year-old Indian shakes Jake's right hand. He leans over the counter and whispers into his future son-in-law's light here. Um, I will cook you up another batch of my blue bottle po me uh, medicine for your honeymoon. Hmm. It really is quite a powerful aphrodisiac. Ah. Jacob gazes into Gloria's golden brown eyes. To be honest, Pop, I really don't think I will be needing any help in that department. But uh, keep a few bottles handy, please, just in case my cough ever comes back, he suggests. Samantha hugs the Civil War veteran. Congratulations, Daddy, she smiles. Bill Burns hugs Gloria and kisses her left cheek. You make a beautiful couple, grins the young undead undertaker. I'm only sorry that I cannot stay for the wedding. Why not, asks Jake. I want you to be my best man. He's very disappointed. Look at my face, frowns Bill. If I stay here, people are going to start asking questions. I see what you mean, laughs this gingery, grey-bearded Civil War veteran. You young, handsome devil. He chuckles. Russell McNulty, the tall, young, beautiful, copper-colour-haired teenage hustler, puts his left hand around his client's shoulder. I'm going with Billy. He grins a buck tooth smile. Shit, look at this guy, he suggests. If he gets any prettier, I'm going to have to start paying him. So if he, start, so if he gets any prettier, I'm going to have to start paying him. Abraham Lincoln Jackson is now wearing a, a black and blue checkered suit. A navy blue bowler hat, a purple frilled shirt, a royal blue waistcoat and a green bow tie. What is this? asks the young handsome undead negro, staring at the glass of scarlet red look liquid in his right hand. Uh, the pastor's blood. I have a barrel of it down in the cellar, ready for whenever you need it. Laughs Hawakan. Courtesy of the local undertaker. How does it taste? Abe gulps the blood down in a single mouthful. Hmm, a little bit too salty for me, to be honest. But it does the job, laughs the young brown-skinned vampire, grinning a pearly white tooth smile. Sheriff Carl Hayden shakes Bill Bones' right hand. I have to be saying goodbye too, he frowns. I have to catch the spirit of Summerland train to Washington, D.C. at seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, 
I now smile to the young, handsome, still broken toothed, bristle faced undertaker. His beard was already starting to grow back. Just take your seat on the Senate. I wish you every success in that, my old friend. I don't know what the city of Phoenix will do without you, frowns Bill. I've lived here all my life, sighs Carl. My father, Charles Trumbull Hayden, was a business partner of Jack Swilling, the founder of the town. They met when Jack was a prospector during the California Gold Rush. After Swilling discovered gold dust in the Asaya Yampa River, Actually, Jack Swilling was the first justice of the peace in this town. The poor sod, oh, sorry. The poor sod had had a bullet lodged in his broken skull since seven years before the Civil War and still ended up as a captain, so as captain of the Gillow Rangers. That's when he discovered his river of gold. Welcome pours another whiskey into the sheriff's glass tumbler. I knew them both quite well, actually, your father and Jack Swilling. And I've known Carl since he was knee-high to a cricket. Mm. Jack was a regular customer of mine until he left town. Maybe he should have taken a couple of bottles of my blue potion with him. The old red Indian medicine man scratched his head. Come to think of it, I'm quite sure that he did. They were probably confiscated when Swilling was arrested, suggests Sheriff Carl Hayden. The undertaker, the under undertaker, takes another swig from a bottle of French brandy. What was he arrested for? asks Bill. Jack was suspected of taking part in a stagecoach robbery in Witchenburg with two of his friends. He died in Umar prison in 1878, uh, just a few short weeks before the real thieves were caught, sighs Carl. That is what got me interested in the law in the first place. Anyway, my dear friends, I think six years as sheriff is long enough for me, laughed the six-foot-tall lawman. Even though I never even got to fire my pistol once, he chuckles to himself. Carl gazes at the undead undertaker and shrugs his broad shoulders, looking very concerned. So what about you, asks the sheriff. Where will you go now? Hmm. Wherever my feet take me, I guess, last Bill. Maybe Chicago or New York, possibly even England. The OMS Titanic Ocean Liner will be arriving in New York City Harbour in a few days. And I think I might enjoy a few weeks in a cruise ship. He turns around to face the old Confederate sergeant standing at the bar and shakes Jake's, left, Jake's right hand. A little wedding present. He whispers into his friend's left ear, pressing his keys into the palm of Sergeant Jacob Brown to his right hand. The hearse and the business are yours now. At eight o'clock in the morning of Wednesday, 14th of February, 1912, Arizona time, President William Taft signs the declaration declaring Arizona as the 48th state of America. <laughs>